Um, so I'm a <clears throat> fourth year PhD student from Brown University. And today what I wanna talk about is our recent published work or accepted work on the, on the tin shell modeling um, of structures using paradynamics arguments. Unfortunately, the main investigator of this project, Masoud Basset and Azab couldn't make it today. So um, for, on, on behalf of him, I will be uh, giving this presentation to you today. For the record, I am not a paradynamics person, so I will, I will try to deliver his ideas to the best of my ability. So uh, the main idea behind this uh, framework is, is the motivation that we wanna capture um, plasticity, large deformation, deformations, material fragmentation using a tin shell model in the paradynamics um, context. So without any further ado, let me dive into uh, the technical details of the framework. Um, so we are dealing with um, shell elements, tin shell elements. So these are typically having a very much, um, very small thickness uh, value compared to two other uh, characteristic dimensions of the 3D body. Um, so for that reason, we are able to represent the motion of the 3D body using a 2D manifold embedded into this 3D space. We go ahead and discretize a mid surface that represents uh, the entire uh, 3D body. Uh, for that reason, we need an, a notion of parametrization because when you go to finite elements or uh, isogeometric analysis type of approach, the first thing that you will see that there is a there is an there is an existence of a parametric domain on which all the schematic quantities, uh, tin shell related schematic uh, quantities build on. So for that reason, for every uh, paradynamic node. Uh, we go ahead and take a look at uh, the neighborhood points uh, surrounding this uh, paradynamics node, and <clears throat> we can compute a covariance matrix. So that covariance matrix, the, the, the two largest uh, eigenvectors that are corresponding to two largest um, eigenvalues, give us a really nice estimation um, of of the uh, of the of the tangent uh, vector that is built upon this paradynamic node. So once we have this orthonormal basis vectors, we can go ahead and project difference between a uh, neighboring point and the central point Q and Q neighboring point and P is the central point. So that way we can build a parametric uh, coordinates between uh, every bond P and um, Q. Okay, so that brings me um, to the tin shell kinematics assumption, why we need the parametric direction. So here, as I mentioned earlier, we represent this three body, 3D uh, body as a 2D parametric uh, tangent space. And in order to describe the, the tin shell related kinematic quantities, uh, we need this parametric direction, direction coordinates. Once we have this parametric coordinates, we can represent the position, spatial uh, position of every material point in the 3D body using this um, uh, parametrization basically. So two, X2D is the position of any given 3D material point um, projected on the 2D surface. And H is the thickness of the shell, which is assumed to be much smaller than the other two characteristic directions. And N is the normal vector that is uh, basically ortho, orthonormal to the other um, eigenvectors on the tangent space. So here we respect the classical Kirchhoff law tin shell assumptions, normal vectors remain straight throughout the deformation process and the motion of 3D body is characterized by the mid-surface. So this formulation is rotation-free. Everything is described based on transitional uh, velocity degree of freedoms. All right, so let me talk about the kinematics a little more. Here we depart from the degenerated solid approach. Uh, we represent every material point with its 3D position vector. We characterize them that way. And um, in order to drive the spatial velocity gradient, which is the main me metric to drive the stress objective stress update, we go ahead and compute a 3D velocity vector, which is nothing but a material time derivative of the special, um, this 3D position vector. Here, the most important um, term is the time rate of the normal vector, which carries a notion of, uh, of rotations. And uh, we have found a really nice way to compactly express this term by using these axillary matrices that are only depending on the current position of a given uh, paradynamics node. And then afterwards, um, relying on the continuous reproducing channel basis functions, we go ahead and differentiate the 3D velocity vector as well as the 3D position vector to come up with the spatial velocity gradient. So the symmetric part of spatial velocity gradient is the rate of deformation tensor. And this is how we derive the stress update scheme using correspondence paradynamics uh, ideas. All right, so um, 
as you have seen, I need the parametric uh, derivatives of these kinematical quantities. So we need to be able to compute this uh, parametric derivatives of vector valued functions. To, the, to this end, uh, we are using an integral based uh, partial derivative, derivative operator for the first and the second parametric um, derivatives. Here, um, I don't want to uh, really delve into the details. You can find uh, uh, derivations in the paper. Here we can collect um, the parametric derivatives of the reproducing um, kernel fun basis functions phi in this vector. And um, it's a really robust way of uh, computing this uh, needed parametric derivatives, even in the face of large deformations. Here, one important um, thing to note is that omega here, the weighting function uh, degrades as we um, experience more damage uh, on, the, on the bond level. All right, so that brings me to the governing equations of the tin shell. Um, nothing really fancy here. We are solving the um, conservation of the linear momentum in the updated Lagrangian format. It's a purely mechanical process. Uh, there is no multi-physics. Uh, we keep the things very general. So th at this point, there is no tin shell, tin shell kinematics. Here, the, 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 the very views, we make use of a very fundamental argument. The rate form of the energy balance basically states that uh, the rate of change of the total energy, as you can see on the left-hand side, is balanced by the supplied power into the system in the forms of body forces, traction forces acting on uh, the mid-surface. Here, the most maybe important uh, metric is um, the total strain power term. We use uh, the correspondence paradynamics argument to define um, <clears throat> the strain power density at any given paradynamics node P. And in order to bring the stability into this correspondence uh, paradynamics idea, we use, we use a bond associative um, arguments. All right, so let's specialize for the tin shell. Um, here, what the only thing I do is simply introducing the 3D weather to vector and all tin shell related kinematical quantities into equations. And that way we can see that uh, the kinetic energy rate term clearly separates the transitional and the rotational parts. We can actually go ahead and say that my H is already very small. It's a tin, tin, tin shell approximation. So this term is relatively much smaller than the first uh, term here. And at the end of the day, we arrive at uh, almost like a variational form for, uh, for this paradynamics uh, approach for the tin shell modeling. So this is, the, this is the equation that is implemented in the code, and this is, uh, this is the basis, the backbone of the entire formulation. So let me a little bit talk about uh, the code structure. Uh, it's a serial code written in C++ with almost no library dependencies. So right now we can go ahead and clone the depository and, and keep playing, playing around with it. It's, it's very um, standalone implementation. So maybe one important thing to mention is that we um, use a data structure data type called parameters and a pointer to this structure's object is passed to all these functions so that you don't really have to worry about which input parameters you need for every function. So every analysis related variable can be easily updated within the functions. And I think that also gives you a nice flexibility if you wanna try out your own ideas. So here we make use of an explicit Velestuvela uh, time integration algorithm. In the beginning of the time step, we go ahead and update um, kinematical quantities. And based on these updated kinematical quantities, we compute the velocity gradient. And the symmetric part of the velocity gradient uh, in objective terms gives us um, an update. It leads up to an update, uh, stress update scheme. And once we have stress, we can compute uh, the, the force state for a given bond using this function compute force state. And once we assemble the internal forces and the inertial forces, we solve for the accelerations and update um, the kinematical quantities once again for the next load step. Um, all right, so that brings me to numerical examples that you can um, that you can reproduce with this code. The first thing that I want to discuss is um, the first thing we wanted to see was the robustness of this idea, especially PCA, principal component analysis, when it comes to representing complex geometries. Here, uh, we first uh, begin with, so we come up with this geometry that has this ways like shape. Here, um, <clears throat> here we measure 
the error in the normal vector. So normal vector has uh, the first parametric derivatives in it and the curvature has param uh, parametric derivatives up to second order. As you can see, we observe um, super convergence when calculating the normal vector, which involves only the first parametric derivatives. This super convergence behavior happens uh, for the odd orders. This cubic order actually gives us almost like fourth, uh, fourth order convergence. And on the other hand, the super convergence behavior um, shifts to the even orders for computing the curvatures um, in which both we first uh, we use first and the second order uh, derivatives. Um, another numerical example that I want to show you today is uh, this example where we take a piece of uh, coupon and fix one end and apply torsion on the other hand. And we basically measure, we, co we compare the, uh, the twist angle with respect to the L2 norm of the entire uh, displacement field. As you can see, uh, we are able to reproduce the results coming from FEA, IGA sites uh, using some traditional t shell uh, formulations. We are able to reproduce, uh, we are able to reproduce the results in a very, with a very good agreement. On the right-hand side, you see the plastic strain distributions for different um, twist angle levels. We are able to represent very complex stress states without running into any issues in a very robust fashion. And so here is the last problem that I want to show you today. By the way, all these problems can be solved using uh, the codes in the repo. So here we have two identical back-to-back -back, uh, spherical shells sharing the same uh, geometry. Here we use, um, we assume that the materials are made of an elastic, mat elastic brittle material and a projectile approaching to the first sphere uh, with this prescribed um, velocity. So here's a quick video. As you can see, the, the object penetrates the first spherical shell and there is still enough, enough uh, kinetic energy to touch the second spherical object at the backside. As you can see, these fragmented objects are um, reaching to the second spherical object and also creating some uh, damage early on. All right, so uh, that's the last example that you can right now go ahead and comply, comp um, compile the code and generate. It's a very simple problem. It's a nicking problem. Here we take a, a game piece of uh, specimen and we apply uniaxial tension. Here we assume that uh, the material is very brittle. So it's like a ductile damage type of behavior. As you can see, you can reproduce the entire uh, failure behavior um, oh, yeah. of the specimen. Minutes. All right, so that brings me to the conclusion. Today, I'd uh, talk about our recently introduced uh, comprehensive tin shell analysis framework in paradynamics context in order to represent the parameterization of the mid surface. We use principal component analysis. We assume that the Kirchhoff Law tin shell uh, theory uh, for this shell model. And we are using a stable bond associative um, approach to stabilize uh, the paradynamic scheme. It's a very versatile uh, framework. You can go ahead and plug in your favorite classical 3D rate-based constitutive model. And as you seen throughout the examples, the, the shell formulation is verified with several benchmark examples. Thank you. Here are our sponsors.